Let's model and make a typical architectural axon diagram. A true isometric view with Blender Cycles in Krita where we don't have to manually trace anything. That's right, completely open source tools and lightweight post-processing for generating beautiful diagrams like big architecture. We'll go through creating the building, setting up the rendering properties, materials and compositing in Blender and then post-processing with Krita. The final files are available on Patreon in case you would like to use them. Let's start with a sketch, in this case three interlocking volumes of a residential building. I won't spend too much time on the actual design as here we will focus on generating beautiful diagrams. To note, the model could just as easily be generated elsewhere and imported into Blender. But in this case I want to show you how easy it is to model this building within Blender itself. So after drawing the sketch we jump into Blender, delete the default cube, I'm sorry default cube and we draw a plane. This plane is going to serve as our site setting. Then we start creating some primitives that we're going to use as our massing. It's essentially three cubes interlocked into one another. Once we see how it works, we start modifying one of the primitives. And the first thing we need to do is move the origin point to the ground level as opposed to the middle of it. And then change the size of it to 16 by 16 meters. So we'll move each of the boxes 10 meters in the x direction and 10 meters in the y direction and make them a little bit shorter so we have a nice composition similar to the sketch. Let's make the side that it sits on actually 50 by 50 meters. And next we're going to add a boolean and connect all three of them into one object. With the bool tool add-on, join all the cubes into one cube and apply the modifiers. We now have our base mass. Now we need to clean it up in order to be able to subdivide it properly to insert a face with the tissue tessellation add-on. So we'll start by adding loop cuts wherever we can. And wherever we cannot, we'll select an edge and then right click and select subdivide to add an extra vertex. Next, we'll join two vertices by selecting them and pressing J on the keyboard to connect them. And we'll start moving them in place where we can and scaling them so we have nice loop cuts all throughout. Once all the vertices are connected, align the loop cuts with the help of the vertex snap tool. Instead of having the snap on at all times, once you select the vertex snap, you can press Ctrl while in an active command to enable it. Once the levels are aligned, add the little helper cube that's about 3.2 meters tall to understand where to place our loop cuts. Next, with Ctrl R, add three loop cuts in the bottom. Add another loop cut on top but wait, Houston, we have a problem. A few disconnected loop cuts. The lovely experience working with mesh topology. Actually, it is lovely. So select edges, right click, subdivide, add loop cuts where possible and select the vertices and press J once again to connect the vertices. And let's repeat once more for the top. Now it should be all looped out. Next time, I think I'll try with extrude manifold instead of booleans because the booleans do require a lot of cleanup. Continue to add horizontal loop cuts where needed. Then add some vertical loop cuts. Don't worry with the spacing if it's not perfect at this stage as the main point is to generate a massing fast. We'll create some placeholder materials for the vertical surface, roof, and base. Let's move the whole building up by 2 meters and extrude the bottom loop cut by 2 meters down to create a base that's not going to be a panel or window. As for the facade, initially I was thinking to do simple insets but then I thought it would be better to create panels and tessellate with the tissue add-on that comes bundled with Blender. Check out this video in case you're interested more in tissue as it's one of the best tools available for architecture within Blender. So for the panel, we start with a simple plane and then we create an inset. We move that inset slightly in and that's gonna be sort of a window and we have the solid area, which is the size that we have. Let's add a few loop cuts for the windows and that's gonna be the frame of the windows. And then add a few more loop cuts for the actual window panel sizes. Inset those again and extrude and separate to create another set of frame. Loads of frames here we have primary, secondary, tertiary. And lastly, let's assign some materials to have our file better organized. I find that the more time I spent in setting up materials early on, the more seamless the process is once we're ready to assign those materials with proper definitions and textures and so on. So next, let's extrude the bottom and add a balcony with a balustrade. Now, this panel is not quite to scale yet, so it doesn't matter what size the balustrade height is, as long as it looks proportionally well to the window size. 
Once the panel is done, then it's time to tessellate. But first we need to separate the facade from the roof and the base. The panel and all assets from this file are available on Patreon. And there are many ways to tessellate, including as part of an object. But in this case, let's separate the faces. So once the tissue add-on is enabled, select first the facade grid and then the panel and hit tessellate. And things are not quite all right. That's okay though, we can fix them. The first item to adjust is the orientation. Tessellation orientation works best with UV unwrapped faces. So select the faces, the vertical faces that is, and do a cube projection, then refresh the tessellation. It's still not quite right. We need to open the UV editor and rotate the UVs. Refresh again, now we have an upside. Refresh again, and now we have upside down balconies. So what we need to do is rotate all the UVs 180 degrees. Now we have the right orientation, but the tessellation is still looking a bit funny. There's a fairly new option within tissue to use the direction of the faces instead of the normals for the tessellation. Brilliant option. And the nicest part about tissue is that everything is parametrically linked. So if we decide that we want the windows to be smaller, well, let's make them smaller within the panel and then hit refresh within the tessellation object. We can also adjust the offset inwards or outwards from the base surface. And we can continue with some refinements of our panel and then just continue to hit refresh on our tessellation object. Facade is complete, on to a few tweaks for the roofs. We will extrude the roofs up, inset and extrude down slightly to create a parapet. Let's create roof, HVAC units or stair egress, whichever you prefer by selecting one of the faces duplicating and extruding. Then duplicate the whole cube and move it to one of the other roofs. Shrink the roof height slightly so it looks proportional to the building. We don't want to have huge roof unit for a small building. And then duplicate again and position on the middle roof. So the building massing is now done. So it's time to start creating the context. The context will be fairly simple and lightweight with the intent to put the focus squarely on the building we're presenting. So with the 50 by 50 meter side block that we already created, we're gonna start beveling the corners. Then apply the scale and inset to create the pavement area or the sidewalk, whichever country you're from. Create an array in the X direction with relative spacing of one and constant spacing of six meters. Add another array in the Y direction. Now let's add a few buildings. The buildings started with simple primitives, but then the fronts became a light. Then boolean out the middle plot and building. Duplicate the plot, delete the arrays and the buildings and move in the correct position. 56 meters in the X direction and 56 meters in the Y direction. Now the context is almost done. Let's add a road surface that sits 200 millimeters below and we're good to go. Time to add a camera. Choose a view that works, add the camera to the scene and go to view, align, align active camera to view. Then, in the camera settings, change the camera type to orthographic and adjust the scale to match. A scale of 150 worked well in this scene. At this point, with the camera aligned and with the context in place, we can go ahead and adjust some of the buildings to match our camera and be able to see our view better. The camera must be rotated 54.7 degrees in the X direction and 45 degrees in the Z direction. Having a proper isometric view will give you the opportunity to use the view as a base in apps with isometric grids to draw some vector goodness on top. Affinity Designer has amazing vector isometric capabilities as it allows you to draw on a plane. Definitely a topic for another video. In case you're interested, let me know in the comments. Now let's switch the render engine to cycles, enable denoising and let's preview it. It's a bit dark gray. And there are a few objects that need to be turned off. Let's add a sun. Hey, it's starting to slowly improve. And with the sun position add-on that comes with Blender, we will use the New York preset to move our sun around by adjusting the north direction. Once happy with the north direction, let's go ahead and change the color of the background. We'll keep it white instead of an HDRI for this diagram. Let's go back to the rendering settings, scroll the way down to color management, expand it, and change the look from none to very high contrast. Let's start to adjust some of the materials by selecting the roofs with select similar and complainer and make them green. We will also make the plot green so it is easy to see. Now we will be assigning material indices. This is important step for later for masking. So with the masking indices, since we have more materials that are assigned to our project, we'll keep that as zero for the material index. 
and we'll assign one to the material index for each of the materials that go in the context. And there's some interesting gaps in the building. Let's see if we can fix them by playing with the offset value in tissue. Then a few more rendering tweaks. Let's take the samples down to 50. With the noising enabled, it shouldn't be a problem. I've also found that larger images with less samples work better than smaller images with more samples, as the denoisers have more pixels to work out, so there's less botching. Next, in the Passes tab, turn on Material Index Pass prior to rendering and then render by hitting F12. Once the render is complete, open a Compositor panel and add an ID Mask node. Something's not quite right with my indices here. And while we're at it, let's reduce the samples and the resolution a bit so it renders slightly faster. The simplest solution to the Index Mask is to expand the ground plane with an Index 1 and now it's sorted. Let's add a Set Alpha node and export this PNG then export the base image as a PNG as well. Getting the mask indices right is key and it will allow us to easily post-process the file later. Also, if we decide to change the massing but keep the same materials for parts of the massing, the post-processing will be just as easy. When we're done modeling and rendering, the next step is post-processing with Krita. If you have never used Krita before, don't worry. It works similar as Photoshop and Affinity Photo. It's mainly a sketching app, but it has almost everything of Affinity Photo and I've grown to really like working with Krita, especially for these kinds of post-processing requirements. It also has one feature that Affinity Photo doesn't have yet, Stroke Outline Layer Effect. You can get Krita at krita.org. For this part, you don't need to have any prior experience with Krita. So let's start by opening the image and dragging the second mask image into the same file and clicking load this new layer. Then control click the mask layer to select the area and click the small arrow next to the plus icon to open the menu of all the different layers and masks available to add. In this case, we will add a filter layer, which will influence only the selected area. The filter layer we will use is levels. Now let's adjust the levels to brighten the image. Next, we'll do the same, but this time with the inverted selection. So select the mask layer again with control plus click, then go to select, invert the selection area. Now add another filter layer that will adjust the levels of the context. And then let's rename the layers so there's something a little bit more useful. Let's adjust the original mask layer now. Due to filmic, the color space gets constrained to make sure that the gamut fits between the values of an 8-bit image. Because of this, we have to brighten our mask to make it completely white. So instead of adding a non-destructive levels layer, we will now go to the filters menu on the top and add levels in that way. And let's bring the whites all the way up to half. Now the level should be properly white. Next, right click on the layer, go to layer styles and enable stroke outline. Change the opacity to 100 and make it a little bit thicker or thinner as you like. Press OK. And when we exit out, we have our black outline. Let's change the layer's opacity from normal to multiply. And the white goes away. We're just left with the black outline. And we can also tweak the levels of both the foreground and the background as we find suitable. The image is almost done. It needs maybe one more thing, which is trees. So we can make trees quite simple with a couple of brush strokes. So once we're happy, we can duplicate that tree around or we can make a brush that we can use later. If you're interested to know how to make brushes in Krita, I'll be putting a little short video snippet on the Patreon page. So the image should be done by now, so it is time to export. Bonus tip. To enable the default file explorer in Krita, go to settings, configure Krita, miscellaneous, and check the option near the bottom to enable the native dialog. Now, if we go back to Blender and adjust the massing, export the images again and open them in Krita, we will not have to trace the outline as the masks will be updated. Thanks so much for watching. Files and some small bonus videos are available on Patreon that show a few more tweaks like how to export from Blender faster. How do you find this workflow? Happy to hear your comments and also what other videos you might find useful for architectural design. Stay tuned for another video coming up that shows how to do a very similar diagram with Eevee and Blender's Compositor. Yep, there's the possibility to do all this within Blender, if that's your thing. So what kinds of architectural workflows would you like to see next?